Hello everybody and welcome to my walkthrough video of how I made the Crimes of Grindelwald Queenie dress for my wife Haley. Um, this is the first time I've ever really made a lot of effort to record like a tutorial kind of thing for a video uh, for one of my costumes so I apologize uh, when like halfway through it switches to like I was holding the camera this way and then I switched this way because I didn't know what I was doing so sorry about that but uh, what I was really trying to do with this video is kind of show the step-by-step -step process that I took and kind of my way of thinking um, with each step for making this dress so I hope you enjoy it I hope that you'll like comment below or ask me any questions or anything um, the fabric was custom printed uh, and designed by our friend Savannah. So we'll tag her Instagram in the thing below. And um, so give uh, give her full credit for that. And, um, and yeah, so here's the video, enjoy. So this is the very first step in doing the Crimes of Grindelwald Queenie dress. I'm doing a mock-up in muslin of the pattern pieces. Haley found this vintage pattern it's falling apart. Put it over here. This very old simplicity pattern. Uh, the package is like completely disintegrating. Um, but we're doing uh, style one right here because it has the collar that matches the movie and long sleeves and then the skirt. The skirt uh, pattern is actually missing from the pattern. We got this off of eBay, was it? Yeah. eBay. Um, and so the pattern pieces are missing, unfortunately. So I am going to Frankenstein some patterns together and use something I was I'm using to get Haldo, that uh, that drape on Haldo. But there's a skirt here. So I'm going to use this skirt and add it to the top of this dress and see what happens. And so when I'm doing my mock-ups, I usually just uh, copy the pieces, the markings on the pattern. So um, there's going to be the bolt, I think they're called bolts, um, on this dress. So I'll just use my marking pin um, to mark up on the muslin. And so this is going to be, those markings are there. And we're going to sew this to create the bolts on both sides of the front. And then we'll sew that to the back piece. Okay, so I've done the bolts now, and it says like to press and everything, and I'll do that for the final version, but just for a mock-up, there's no point. Um, I use a really, like, usually just use like red thread or whatever I grab first, because um, it doesn't matter. Super wide stitch. We're just getting a quick version of what we think it's going to look like. So now we attach the front to the back and go from there. And there you go. So starting to actually look like a piece of clothing. Um, all sewn in there, so we can see the collar flaps that we're going to add to in a bit, and then we see where we're going to add the collar. All there. Okay, so now I've added the facing and first half of the collar. I've just realized that this pattern does not include a lining for the upper half of the dress. Uh, so that means that I get to figure out what the facing minus this side gets to measure out to be uh, to add the lining to the inside of the dress. But this is going to be the collar that will open up. Um, yeah, like I've made a ton of mistakes on this. Like nothing's even. But like, who cares? It's just a mock-up, so it doesn't matter like what it looks like, or like the whatever's crumpy. Like, I, it doesn't matter. We're just trying to figure out fit, and uh, move on from there. Okay, and so now it's sort of, kind of starting to look like clothes. Um, so obviously, I am not awesome at collars. I really don't know how they work. So I'm gonna have to watch a lot of other YouTube videos uh, on how to make these lapels nice and pretty at the corners because uh, I struggle with that on my nuke coat and I definitely don't want that to uh, look anything like that on the finished product but um, yeah so happy with the facing opening up like this uh, happy with these peaks um, so the sizing all looks pretty good 
um, bolt there. Uh, it's possible that there might be some more bolts on the dress, which I would not like, but uh, we're gonna have to look at some more pictures and see what that looks like there. Um, I think there might be more than just the one. Um, and I might not make them quite this deep either. This is a pretty deep one, and I don't think the dress goes all the way down to the bust line. I think it probably, I think they stop right about there. Um, again, we're working with so few pictures, I'm not quite sure. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Back, um, it's just the back. We haven't seen a single picture of the back of the dress, so no idea what that looks like. Just gonna make it up as we go and forgive ourselves if it's wrong. Okay, new day, new work on the mock-up. So I've looked at a lot of reference pictures and noticed that I really don't think that this line here is a bullet. Uh, what it looks like to me is uh, two pleats that are pleating inward, and then the same on this side. That's really what it looks more like to me. And I've also noticed that there really don't seem to be any peaks on the lapel or the collar of the dress. It's just one solid all the way down, just like Newt's vest, which is one solid piece all the way down. So I kind of made up my own pattern pieces. Um, what I did was I lengthened out the collar because the collar really cut off right here. So I added about an inch and a half on both sides of the collar piece right there. And then I just sewed on top, because this is a mock-up, so who cares, um, the facing pieces, the pattern pieces that uh, now go all the way down on the inside. So they're kind of tucking out there because the seam allowance, I didn't pay attention to that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I have the collar now. And uh, flip it up. You can see that that's what it looks like underneath. Uh, so yeah, the, the blouse then attaches to the collar underneath there, but then on top it's one solid piece. So I think that looks closer to what the dress looks like. Um, the biggest challenge is going to be lining up the, the, uh, the lines there because I'd like to get it as close as possible to what it actually looks like in the movie um, as far as the lines go. We'll see what happens though. All right, so new day, new progress. Trying on the top of the dress on Haley. And so I've got kind of the pleats where I want them. Facing inward, her necklace, her beautiful necklace that she made. Oh yeah, I need to talk about that. Herself is hitting exactly where it's supposed to. Woo! And turn around. There's the back, I've kind of cinched it in a little bit here. Um, so, so to the sleeves and everything, so yeah, it's coming along. So I added the sleeves to the dress. Kind of poofy, which is how it looks in the pictures. Um, I use the same pattern as the blue Quinny dress, um, which is over here, which I made draped and everything. Um, so tall to allow for poofiness. And um, since the sleeves in this dress aren't three parts like the blue dress is, it's just two parts. So I just kind of extended it out and tapered it so it's not as square as this one is. And so on the bottom, um, I'll add the kind of flare kind of tulip thing that's the same as the blue dress. Um, kind of carried over into this one. I ripped off the the ugly sheet skirt that I was using. Um, it just wasn't working. It was too small in the waist and it was too fluffy and long along the um, along the bottom. So I just tore it off. I'm gonna do it again. All right, so the skirt worked out really well. What I did was took the pattern of the first skirt I did, uh, the one with the sheet that did not work. <laughs> and just kind of folded down this this corner that it was just creating too much like flounciness and too much bulk on the bottom of it. And so I just folded it down and then extended the waist a little bit, um, a little bit too much actually, so then I cut it back, but I was happy to have it too long and too short, um, the cutting hallway um, where I was doing my work. There's Lena, hey. And so then here is the dress so far. 
so pretty happy with it. Um, skirt's a little long, but I've marked it. We tried it on Haley and it fits really well, so I'm gonna cut it there. Um, and yeah, looking pretty good. So Luna seems to like it, and I like it, and Haley likes it, so. And then here's the back. And so again, the, the two patterns I, I used as the basis, I mostly focused on this one um, because it had the great collar and shape. I didn't use the sleeve pattern there because um, it has these pleats here that I didn't want to use. Um, but it did have a nice form for the collar even though I had to create my own pattern so that uh, it didn't have the points. Um, but overall, it was a great shape, so it was really helpful. Unfortunately, I didn't have the skirt included. Uh, where this was like an eBay or Etsy find, uh, so it's very old, and it didn't actually have the skirt pattern in it, which is kind of disappointing. So then I used this one. Um, I used the bottom half, and that was the skirt I just showed you on that I had cut on the floor. So now I'm going to tear this thing apart and use the pieces for a pattern on our custom printed fabric. Oh, dun, dun, dun. dun 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 I'm so scared to cut this <laughs> pray it, for us <laughs> it's really pretty and we can't just go back to Hobby Lobby and get some more this is it so yeah so of course the best part of this dress is that you can't just cut it nice and square the entire dress has the pattern at an angle. So I'm going to have to be very careful and cut one piece at a time and really go at a 45 degree angle so that everything is gonna match up. This is gonna be really hard. All right, so I've made the first cut and that's what it looks like so far. So this is the point where I wish that I could just wave my wand or Queenie's wand and just have all this stay together without pins. Um, the only thing that didn't really, my pattern didn't work out with the, um, the collar. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Um, one side is flat and then one side is like curved. Um, so I don't know which side is the right way so I'm gonna have to figure that out but uh other than that and uh, the little uh, little additions on the ends of the sleeves like the blue Queenie dress everything's cut out okay if you've noticed that there's a change in the videos because I'm turning the camera sideways now um, so I've added the collar to the dress and I found out that it was the flat pattern that was good not the the curved pattern so we're all set so i've kind of got the necklace on here as a reference but yep all right so i have added well i haven't added but i've finished a sleeve and it looks really long but that's just because like i still have to do all the the gathering at the top so i think this is called an ease stitch what i've cut at the top anyway to do the uh the ruffly part and then um, it looks like she's got the same kind of end as the, um, the blue dress here with kind of the tips. So I've added that on. I just used my same pattern. And uh, I'm also going to add like a little button here at the wrist just because I think that's what the blue dress looked like and I didn't actually end up doing that. And so how I've done this is I have my sleeve here and I'm going to roll this a little bit and stitch that on each side. And then I use my same pattern from the sleeve end for the blue dress to make some new ones here. And I'm just going to uh, add that on here and then sew it together and then put it on the dress. All right, I have cut out the skirt using the pattern that I made earlier and I used the same pattern to cut out the lining, which are not actually connected. They're just kind of hanging out together right now. Um, but the reference picture, we see her sitting down in that poster. She appears to have gold lining under the skirt. 
I'm only doing the lining for the skirt, even though we bought um, tons of lining fabric up here <laughs> because I thought I was gonna line the whole dress, but like, what's the point, who cares? So, <laughs> uh, dress is over here. We've got the little middle piece for the waist and the opening over here for the zipper, if we can get it. There we go. And then I'm gonna put an extra big zipper because, um, with on the on the hip because I put a small one in on the blue dress and we have to struggle to get Haley into it every time just because it doesn't actually like open up enough so learn from your mistakes all right let's see if we can get the skirt on so the skirt is on now I'm really happy with the way it lined up especially this little side seam right here that's one of my favorite parts when the top and bottoms line up. So really happy there. Um, yeah, so really all that's left major wise is to put in the zipper right there and then hem the whole thing, which is my least favorite thing to do. I hate doing hems. Um, and then I'm gonna have to hand sew, since I'm not lining the whole dress, I gotta hand sew um, the, because this is all like the inside of that is all in there so I gotta tackle that down all on the back of the collar too and then I think I'm gonna overcast the whole thing on the inside all the inside seams so that we don't risk anything getting unraveled um, so that'll be a little time-consuming but it'll be worth it because it'll last longer um, I've done these little openings with the sleeves and so I'm gonna do a little loop and like a button oh, I feel like I was chipping on something <laughs> Um, to do those together, just to have like that little wrist opening there. I think that'll be cute. I don't know if it's actually on the dress, but I did anyway. Um, yeah, so come along. All right, everybody. So several days have passed. Um, we tried on the dress and it did not fit. It was much wider in the waist than we wanted it to be. And it was pretty disappointing to have done all that work and it not work. Um, so adjusted adjusted frame of mind very helpful reference perfect fitting the complete photo guide to perfect fitting which was at our local library so we've got that and i've been reading through that to try to figure this dress out and uh just retried it on i seam ripped everything i seam ripped the skirt away i seam ripped the the lining um just opened it back up to try to get it fixed so what i think the solution is going to be is just to deepen in the back this um this kind of it's not a dart but just this kind of gathering here and just deepen it where it's going to take two and a half inches uh, it was like four inches too big at the hips basically so gonna taper that a little better and constantly try it on Haley as i go instead of getting all the way to the end uh and then i'm going to put some darts along the the buttock as this book refers to it uh to try to get those four inches off of the waist in the back. Um, basically just with so few reference pictures, I just don't know where everything is and where it's supposed to be. So just kind of making it up and hope that Colleen Atwood <laughs> thinks the same way I do. All right, so I've taken a lot of steps and didn't really record all of it. So let me tell you now what I've done. Um, so I've added some interfacing to the collar, which I should have done um, like when the pieces were separated. Uh, but oh well, we've done it now, so collar will have some stiffness with the interfacing. Um, so to fix the fit, oh yeah, so y'all can see the inside of it, which no one's ever going to see, so who cares, but uh, who cares. So, fix the fit problem. Um, what I did was in the back of the dress, I just tried it on Haley and basically had to take four inches out of the waist. Um, and the way I did that was I just kind of took a just a big pinch in the back and pinned it and then sewed a line up that. And now it fits really, really well. Um, still not perfect in the back, but it's like, this is the inside. So you're getting the view that no one is ever gonna see. Um, I also put some bolts um, over the hips. So you can see those in the lining and they're also in the skirt. 
and then I put in the zipper. And so I hand sewed the lining into this uh, on top of the zipper so that that kind of all closes up. And then the zipper's on the inside all the way up to there. And so that's what it's looking out like on the inside, which again, no one's ever gonna see, so who cares what it looks like. And now because I don't have a serger, I am overcasting the inside of the dress using um, this stitch and an overcasting foot so I can get a nice finished edge. And just as a side note, you don't have to have any kind of fancy stitch on your machine um, to use an overcast. Um, you can use any zigzag and it, it'll still catch on the foot. Um, so the way that happens is there's this little thing right here that wraps the, th sorry, my finger, um, that, oh, there's a pin, um, that wraps the fabric around and comes up and under here. And then the needle comes and like goes across. And then there's a little, sorry, little metal bar that's right there that's covered up right now, you can't see it, that, um, that pulls the zigzag with it. So that way it just kind of wraps around the fabric and gives you a nice finished edge like this. So this is the way to serge without having a serger. And I like it. And I don't know when this became Michael's sewing lesson, but it is. Um, it's really important not to force or anything when you're overcasting. Like, let the machine do the work. Don't try to push or pull it through because then you're going to get really ugly, uneven overcast and it's like kind of wasting your time because it's just going to come apart. So just let the machine do the work and just kind of guide it through as it goes because it does it all for you. I'm done overcasting and I was looking through my sewing bucket and I found all of these buttons that I didn't even know I had. Um, I think they came from like some kind of lot or something, but I'm gonna put some buttons on the sleeve of the dress right here at the wrist, because um, that's how the blue dress was. And I don't know, I don't know if it's actually like this, but I just think it's cute and pretty, so I'm gonna do it. Um, and so I pulled out all of these buttons and they're so cool. They're all like kind of metallic and very old looking, like old coins and old symbols. And they just look very like witchy, like wizardy witchy old coin stuff. So I asked Haley to look through them and she picked out these two. So there's the flowers and then the heart and the key, which she says represents her love for Jacob. Um, so I, do, I love that they're different. Um, I think it's a special little touch. So I'm gonna add those to the wrist. So while this was the first attempt on the bow, I went to the campus printing station today and got some sewing patterns made. It's a super dark picture of the bow, so I'm gonna cut this out so I know exactly how big the bow is so I can actually put it on the dress. And what I did to try to figure this out is I measured this tiny picture of Queenie where you can see the bow, uh, measured it out in centimeters, and then did proportions to where to try to get it life size. So I'm gonna cut it out and see what happens. I've used the pattern to cut out the shape and added a 5 8 seam allowance there for the fold over. And so um, just adding, I cut it in half and then fold it over and see how it goes. All right, with happy with how this is turning out. So what I did was I used this pattern um, and folded it right there so that I had some little extra space because there is um, a stitch in between here. So I wanted to try to replicate that. So I just cut it in half and then folded this under and then stitched it from the underside so the stitches wouldn't be visible. Um, and then cut it out. And so then I cut out my stiff interfacing using this pattern. And what I've done 
is I've used a very thick fusible interfacing, um, like really thick. That's, it's, it's got adhesive on both sides. And so what I've done is put popsicle sticks here, there, and there. And then I did muslin over that and then ironed it all so it would all stick together. And I'm very happy with how it's come out because that's pretty stiff. That's not really going anywhere. Um, the first one was super floppy and this one is not. So it's looking really good so far. The shaping is really good. And I've got my seam allowances there. So um, fold those under and then I'll cut out another piece for the back which I can actually sew onto the dress. Uh, my previous attempt I wasn't able to do that. Um, the velvet is really just going to be the next challenge. So gotta figure that out next. Um, so I used my pattern to make a pattern for the velvet in combination with cutouts from the, um, the big blow-up picture. Just kind of use these to make that and then cut out the velvet. So that's over here and I've drawn on the back where I want them to be and got my seam allowance on there. So um, they fit really well so far on there. So the trickiest bit is gonna be kind of turning these inside out and then sewing them in the correct spot um, on like that line and not hitting the popsicle sticks in the back. Um, so now to figure out to do that. Okay, so the velvet is on and I'm happy with it. So all of that is done around the edges and now I'm adding on the backing. So what I did was um, used just fabric glue, just this stuff that we just happen to have with us, and use a popsicle stick to just spread it out over this and then put it on there. And then I hand sewed along there, which I'm not a very good hand sewer, but I think that turned out pretty well. And I'm leaving this space in the middle not glued so that I can sew that to the dress, but I wanted to glue this down so that it wouldn't like be floppy or pull out or anything or like lose its shape. So I'm just leaving this part in the middle unglued um, and the popsicle sticks are in there to support it. I'm like really surprised. I did not realize that I sewed through the popsicle sticks. That was not intentional, but it happened. So, oh well, um, obviously my sewing machine is super tough and can handle it. So yeah. So really, I just need to do this tomorrow and then uh, get it on the dress and it'll be done. Okay, I'm done. It's done. Bows on the front. Sleeves are finished. Hem is finished. Everything is done. Now he was gonna try it on and it's gonna look amazing. It's so good. Ah! And here we finally have the finished product. So full disclosure, this is quite a few months after I finished the dress because we forgot to do this part of the video. Um, oh well. So here's Haley wearing the dress in our garage studio setup. And uh, we can see all the little details we added. So we've got the bow on the front with the moth pin and it's really bright 